This is WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. Despite having to kick off a player, Jalen Hearn leaving the program to transfer midseason and a couple of wonky losses, the Tennessee Volunteers come into the game with the Kentucky Wildcats this Saturday with a strong defensive presence. And it all starts with this guy, the defensive end, Derek Barnett. He leads the SEC in quarterback sacks with nine and tackles for loss for 14 and a half. Mark Stoops told the media today at his weekly newser, his cats have a lot to deal with when it comes to the beast number nine. No, oh, they're they're. They're a very talented team. I think if a, a position group jumps out, obviously there, there's a lot of defensive talent, you know. Um, and like you mentioned, Barnett, you know, blocking him is a real issue. He's a guy that, uh, uh, you know, has relentless uh, effort and, uh, you know, ability to create pressure without blitzing. You know, he's a guy that could get to the quarterback at any moment. Um, so they always have good defensive players across the board. Noon at Neyland Saturday. That's the kickoff time between the Cats and Vols. Last time Kentucky won in Knoxville, by the way, 1984. The SEC Network will televise the game if you're not headed to Knoxville to watch it there. Episode 10 of Chalk Talk tonight. Kentucky comes off the last second field goal loss to the Georgia Bulldogs. But there are some positives from that game. And Freddie Maggard, the former Kentucky quarterback, thinks they could give them an edge against the Vols Saturday. Welcome back. It's Chalk Talk with good old Freddie again. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well. We don't have, well, I mean, it was a good game against yeah. Georgia. Mm -hmm. What did you see out of it for a positive note? And then what's the improvement that they need to make this so week? The positive note, you know, I, I still feel Kentucky as a team was a better football team than Georgia. Georgia, obviously, more talented. Uh, but Kentucky let a, an opportunity slip through their fingers. Uh, two, two turnovers uh, by wide receivers in the third quarter. I, I, would, I would put this game, I know we're going to look at the end of it, with the last minute field goal, uh, Kentucky's inability to score in a red zone down here, a touchdown. But I think the third quarter, the game could have totally uh, turned tides into a Kentucky blowout. You t the lead was 14 to 13. Nick Chubb fumbles. You had the holding call on the field goal, negated that. Then back-to-back -back wide receiver turnovers that could have led to a touchdown and a field goal. So Kentucky up 14-13 could have easily been up 27-13, ball game over. But that's a trend. If you look back to Southern Miss, Mississippi State, Missouri, Vanderbilt, Kentucky had, had a chance to, to extend the leads or to route, blow out opponents, and it's not done so. That plus turnovers uh, came back to bite Kentucky, and it cost them the football game. Let's talk Tennessee. Josh Dobbs, he's just a phenomenal athlete, but yeah. he is inconsistent, as you said. Yes. So what, yeah, what's Do the game plan? Dobbs has been inconsistent, and I actually voted him first team uh, All-SEC in Birmingham, in Hoover rather, and I think the world of him. He's a student athlete. He's a great citizen off the field. I highly respect him, uh, but he has been inconsistent. A lot of that has to do with the, the running back play behind him, down, now down, uh, Kamara out, uh, heard, transferred, quit the team, however you want to describe that. And uh, Josh Dobbs and that offense has had a hard time getting on track this year. Injuries have decimated Tennessee, uh, but for the Kentucky fans that are going to watch the game or go to Knoxville, I feel that uh, Derek Barnett, or Barnett, how they say it in Hazard, like my relatives are Barnett's, not Barnett's, uh, is one of the best football players in America. Leads the SEC in sacks with 10, tackles for loss 14 and a half. He's just a war daddy and a special football player. Evan Berry, kickoff returner, leads the SEC, second in the country. Tennessee is very talented. Uh, its record don't indicate the level or an amount of talent that's on that roster. It's not maximized what it's had. Kentucky will be the lesser talented team on Saturday, but I see Georgia and Tennessee about the same football team, to be quite honest with you. Well, that's all we have here out in Lexington. They have a noon kickoff. Uh, at Tennessee and so we will see you though hopefully with some positives next week. See you guys. All right, thank you very much, Carly and Freddie. Good stuff, as always, with Chalk Talk. Now we switch gears to the hardwood. The Basketball Cats finished up exhibition play Sunday night, scoring a record total of 156 points over Asbury. Part of the reason why they scored so many points was because the Eagles' style of play did not change. The NAIA Division II team, they didn't do anything different. Just because they were playing Kentucky, they kept the same thing. They pressed a lot, they shot a lot of three balls, and they rarely wasted more than 15 seconds off the shot clock. And, of course, that resulted in easy buckets for the Cats. They had 20 nine dunks by the way getting up and down the floor in transition.
When teams press and try to pick me up full court and like bring another person to me, you just you, you honestly just attack. Some people say pass uh, pass through the press, but Cal always told us. I mean, our our best press attack is our speed. So I mean, sometimes you don't have to pass. Sometimes you dribble through it and throw a lob or get a layup. So that's what we did. They were two and zero. This is what they do. They shoot threes. They scramble the game up. They don't let you run offense. They make you play basketball, and they believe they're in better shape than the teams they're playing. So he didn't want to change for this game, and I don't blame him. And, of course, the Cats will open up with Stephen F. Austin this Friday night at Rupp Arena, 7 o'clock tip time on the SEC Network. Well, now to high school ball. Our round ball preview series continues tonight with the Jackson City Lady Tigers. They have a new coach in Ishmael Nice. Junior Thompson steps down after two seasons in Jackson City. A couple of J.C.'s leading scorers from last year have graduated, like Kelsey Talby and Brittany Barnett. No seniors this year, but they think they can build as a unit this season. This is going to be a building year. We don't have any seniors, so we're try we have to build because we have a lot of young players. But I think at the end of the season we'll be able to make some noise. We've got three juniors on the team that really step up and they really, you know, play the role of leaders on the team. So it don't matter a junior or a senior either one. We've got a lot of a building foundation. You know, we got a foundation for next year also. You know, with not having no seniors, we're not going to lose nobody. I think they're really going to do really awesome this year. Well, last year, I feel like we kind of give up more than we should. And I feel like everyone expects that out of Jackson City. And I feel like I really want to change that. And I really feel like this year we can do it. And we have the attitude and we have the positivity that we can do it. Last year, we started giving up some towards the end of games. And that's why we kind of lost a lot. But this year, I think we're going to go full steam the whole entire game and not give up any. All right, now round two of the high school football playoffs kicks off on Friday. We have just 18 coverage area teams alive, and 10 of those teams are in our Alice Lloyd College Mountain Top 10. They're still playing football in November, all 10 of them. Remember, we completed these things, uh, the rankings, after week 10, and they do not change after the final week of the regular season. Belfry is the unanimous number one team in the mountains, followed by Johnson Central, Corbin, Southwestern, and Rockcastle County. At number six is Pulaski County. Of course, the Maroons, they suffered a scare against Harlan County in round one. Seven is undefeated Paintsville. The Tigers are doing real well right now, and it concludes with Leslie, Pikeville, and Whitley County. That's sports, and we'll be back.